welcome back to the line podcast my name is aaron alexander this is a place that we bring together the world's leading experts on all things health and wellness to help y'all optimize your mind body and movement and today's gorgeous conversation was with my homeboy uh, mr tony jeffries he is a absolute legend in the world of boxing uh if i remember correctly i've seen the likes of conor mcgregor uh floyd mayweather and people of the sort uh frequenting his studio um i don't know about frequenting but passing through at least and, and uh he's I mean, he's worked with everybody and in this conversation we get into what it takes to be an olympic competitor which he was uh in in the realm of boxing of course and what it takes to build what is likely the most successful on a line boxing program along with a brick and mortar boxing program so uh, a lot of amazing nuggets on um, just philosophy of life um, addiction uh, rearing children all sorts of great stuff so really great conversation I know you guys are gonna devour this thing uh, thanks for starting the online program which is completely free uh, and you can start the Friday movement challenge for free as well all at align podcast.com a-l-i-g-n podcast Dot com. If you have rolled forward shoulders, forward head posture, you feel stiff, rigid, clunky in that body, you wake up feeling kind of sore and it takes an hour and a half before you start to kind of feel like you feel good inside of your, your bones, then this program is for you and the first week is absolutely free. After that, you will receive the Align Band, which is a heavy duty resistance band, comes along with a door anchor and uh, you know, sort that body of yours, teach you self-care practices, movement practices, Practices, lifestyle stuff, and how to make every moment throughout your day a mother flipping opportunity. Thanks for getting the book too, the Align Method book. That has been number one bestseller on Amazon since its birth, which is great. Uh, I appreciate your guys' reviews. Thanks for reviews on here, on this podcast. And here we go, back to the podcast with Tony Jeffries. Dude, thanks for doing this. Mate, thank you for having us. This is great. <laughs> I really appreciate you making this happen. You're one of the first people that I've done it with that has like uh, gone beyond my own capacities, which is great to experience. <laughs> Do you know what? I've, al I've always knew you were a pretty unique character, but this morning when you text me saying, before we do it, do you want to get in the cold, cold plunge and then do the podcast in the sauna? Yeah. I was like, Ooh, yeah, let's do it. Right, good. Yeah. And it's it's amazing, you know, it really is. And I feel, I feel really good after what you've just had us doing there with the breath work, the ice bath, and then coming in here, I feel amazing. Yeah, so, so what is what is your fitness look like these days? Is it more res restoration, I would imagine? More My like fitness is putting terrible. the parts back together? As you can see, I'm not in. No, you're doing. You're doing. You. you just showed like me you. up on the shit that I I do. So. That's good. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I'm not. I'm not doing much exercising right now as much as I should be. Although I'm in the gym every day. Uh, I, I I still train a few people. I'll be moving around with them, shoulder sparring, body sparring, uh, that sort of stuff. But when it comes to me doing my own workouts, it's something that I haven't been doing as much as I should be. Really. What has been the restoration with? getting punched in the face 50,000 times or whatever it is. I heard you talking to, to Tate Fletcher, who is just one of the raddest people as well. Yeah. Um, and he's, you had like done the math on how many times you've been hit in the face and you got 106 fights or something like yeah, that. And seven fights. punches to the face per round equals like a buttload of... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's scary. I, I did the maths on that because, you know, I was, I was starting to get forgetful, become forgetful and... Sometimes I lose track of thought, uh, and when I'm in, when I'm talking, I forget what I was talking about, and I was thinking, yeah. "Fuck, that must be off, off the boxing." And I thought, oh, "But yeah, I've been punched in the head a lot of times." Then I did all that maths, and thought about all around sparring that I did, and the number came to around fifty thousand times, give or take, f like might be five thousand, so it might be forty-five thousand times, yeah. might be fifty-five thousand times, yeah. and I just thought after that, I was like, "Wow." That's got to have done damage. I would be an idiot or I would be punched drunk if I never thought that has done damage to my brain. Yeah. You know? Um so yeah, it's it's scary. And I've been involved now in doing brain testing in the Cleveland Clinic in Las Vegas, where you go every year and they test your brain, you do MRI scans and then you do computer tests, memory tests, speech tests, and then they they compare you with yourself each year. 
you know, to yeah. see if, oh, it's, see where if it's improving or if it's not. The first time I went it was four years ago. I was 30 years old, and they said um, I was average for a 30 year old, and I was really happy. I was like, yes, it's great, great results. That's what I wanted. And they went, not really, because for all we know, five or six years ago, you could have been above average. Your brain, you know. Yeah. So it takes time. So now over the four year I've been going, uh, there hasn't been any decline. Great. It hasn't improved, it hasn't went down. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I was thinking the irony of being a professional boxer and getting hit in the in the brain has all this these deleterious effects on, on the brain, but then the most positive thing you can do for the brain is, is exercise and right. creative movement and all the footwork and all that. Yeah. So you're almost like, it's almost like it's like uh, it breaks even in a way. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, but, I mean, for, for me, boxing is, is the best workout that you can do. I mean, you've, you've done it a few times now. Yeah. And it's, if you're not getting punched in the face, that is. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's a full body. You're moving your feet. You're using your core when you rotate. And it's really, it really like you said, it really is good for your mind because you've got to put all of these things together, your footwork, your hand and eye coordination, everything. Uh, it's just when you start getting punched in the face, that's when it becomes a problem. Where does the mindset come in with, like, before going into a fight? Like, how, how would you align yourself? So you competed in the Olympics and you've competed in all these these major competitions. Yeah. Um, what is that like, like, when you're right before going into the ring? Like, what's what's happening in your uh, brain? You know, you, you, when your preparations went great, you're in shape, you, you're shredded, you feel like you're strong, and... You, you're confident but then there's always this little time where it pops into your head just before you go in the ring why the fuck am I doing this <laughs> I swear <laughs> to God and, I, and I've got lots of friends that's fighters and they say the same thing or they might say uh, this is the last time I'm doing this why am I doing this ever again but then it goes then the crowd's cheering and then you get in the ring and you're like you, you, you're, you're pumped you know you're, you're pumped yeah right uh, but men mental preparation is, is everything you know, what I used to do the night before fights, I used to do a visualization mm. where I would visualize everything from get going to the venue, getting my hands wrapped, warming up, going into the ring, but like in fine detail. Mm. So Did the, you do the, smells? No. Colors? Colors, no. I don't know, like other senses, textures? No, no. And you were visualizing it. Just it was no, all visual. visualizing. I'd be lying in bed the night before a fight. I'd be sweating. I'd be nervous. Yeah. And then it kind of... The, and then you, then they go for the fight round one round two then you get your hand raised at the end of the fight and the reason why you're doing that is because then when you come to actually doing it you've already done it mentally yeah you know for sure and i got that tip off uh oddly harrison who was an olympic champion in 2000 heavyweight champion so that really changed my game when i started doing the visualization mm. and i think it's something that a lot of athletes are doing now more and more athletes are doing yeah uh, and business people as well before they go into big meetings they do visualization yeah yeah. You visualize negative stuff as well, or only positive? Only positive, like right. only positive. I, you, you, you visualize if if I get caught with this punch, and then this is going to come up. Or let's say I'm fighting an opponent who's got a, a great left hook of the body. I'm visualizing him throwing that and me blocking it. But yeah, but not not so much negative. Did you have you been in street fights? Yeah. What's the difference between a street fight and boxing in the Olympics? The end, <laughs> way faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the end with one punch. It's uh, <laughs> but it's something that I'm I'm really against street fighting because yeah. you can get some serious damage with a street fight. It's crazy, man, that people enter themselves into street fights. Yeah. I do everything possible to not do that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the great thing is now I'm I'm a, I'm a trained uh, fighter, if you like. It's and ninety nine point nine percent of the public is not. Yeah. So it's easier for me. So I've got the upper hand all day long. Yeah. But when you get two people who can really have a fight, luckily I never fought anyone in the street like that. Yeah. Uh, that that's when they can get some serious damage. You know. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess both ways. If you find someone who who doesn't have a clue, who's never been punched in the face before, you know, I remember um, when I was younger, my dad, one of my dad's best friends, my dad went out drinking with him after he just had his newborn baby, and some thug come past and punched him in the face. He banged his head off the floor, and he he's he had some sort of brain damage, cracked all his skull, and he was never the same again. You know, just off off one punch, off some yeah drug, man drug head or whatever it was. It's so so sad. It can be so dangerous. Yeah, 
So what's what's challenging for you these days? You've done, you have successful business, and you're an Olympic athlete, and you're like, it seems like you got all your your parts together. <laughs> it really does, and I really haven't. Yeah, you right. Know? I don't think it and, does. <laughs> I don't think but it when really you look does. on the social media, <laughs> right? You see social media, you see people driving around in nice cars, and you think that they've got loads of money. They've got to figure it out. But I've oh, fuck me, right. I haven't made. It. <laughs> so my my big thing right now. What I'm getting over is alcohol. Good. I'm a fucking I'm a I'm a I'm, I'm a part time alcoholic. I've been drunk more times, and it's the first time I'm admitting this. Yeah. This year than I haven't. You know, oh. I've got a problem with alcohol. Man. Uh, well, I'm having a sober October now. I'm gonna have a, have a month off, just because it helps us switch off at night. And it's me being lazy rather than doing the meditation stuff we spoke about earlier on. I'll have a couple of glasses of wine. My turn a bottle of wine. Yeah. In, in bed and I'm out. You know? Why do you think that is? Uh, Dude, I really appreciate you talking about it. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I see it's the first one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, I, why do I think that is? I, I just I feel like I'm under pressure with my businesses right now. I've got around 50 employees. Um, living in Santa Monica is not cheap. You know, yeah. um, I, I've, I, the, the gyms are doing all right, but I think deep down what it is, I'm one of these people who always wants to be doing better. You yeah. know. I had a when I was 16, I got put on an eight-year training program for the Olympics. So I always had a big goal. I got back from the Olympics, turned professional. I um, hurt my hands. I got forced to retire. I got into business. Now I want to open a gym. I met my business partner. We opened a gym, and it's now what? Now I'm che- I'm always chasing. Always I'm, nice, al- yeah. I'm always chasing. I'm never happy and content. Yeah. I want to be. Yeah. I really do. You probably get little glimmers of it once you reach the top of a thing and it lasts, you know, some yeah. amount of time. Or maybe not. Do you, do you experience well, that? Well, I, I'm doing, like, now the numbers that I'm doing and, and the, the finances that I'm making, uh, five years ago, I would have been, that's all I want to do. Exactly. Yeah, you've but arrived. Now I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you've arrived. But now I'm like, fuck, <laughs> I, need, I need to keep going. I need more on me more. Yeah, yeah I've arrived. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's not. Where so do you think that comes from? Has that been since since you've been like a kid? I mean, that's a pretty darn common sensation. I'm in the sim in a similar boat. Not wouldn't say we're in the same boat because I don't know exactly what boat anybody's on, but you right. know, it's pretty darn common. Right? Yeah. To have that. <laughs> like, well, where's that shit come from? Well, I think what <laughs> entrepreneurs and, and and people like ourselves who's yeah. in in well we're in different industries, but we're still I think we're still chasing forward. You've, you just put a release a book, or is it released? It's coming out in December. So the Align Method on pre-sale. No big deal. <laughs> See, and this book is going to be amazing. I highly recommend it. But this book's going to come out, and and then you're going to sell it a bunch, I'm sure. And I don't know what your goal is if you make money from it or whatever. But yeah. it's going to be like now what? Now I need to write another yeah, book, or, or what's the next? What's the next big thing? Totally. So you've got your goal, and you reach your goal, and then it's, and it's like, then what? I think I'll start getting butt implants. <laughs> you don't need them. <laughs> you've got a nice horse. I'll see you. That'll be my next. <laughs> that'll be the next level. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it's always it's always chasing, you know. It's yeah. always chasing, and that can be it can be a problem. Yeah, it really can. Do you think that that's childhood stuff? You well, think that's where it, where's that? What's the or, origination of that? But when I was a when I was a kid, I was obsessed with making money, obsessed. Yeah. And I think now I'm I'm still the same. But uh, in school, selling selling sweets, selling cigarettes, getting mm. kicked out of school for for doing selling shit like that. Never sell never sell drugs or anything Ill- illegal. Although selling cigarettes was illegal in school when I was thirteen, selling to thirteen year olds. All right, I think you've been doing everybody a favor. You've been selling weed instead of sweets. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've always been hungry and always wanted to get the numbers that's in the bank higher and higher. And it's it's never it's never stopped. Yeah. What do you think it'll take for satiation? Fuck, I know. I was, I was, <laughs> I was thinking before, like, I, I would love to have a couple of million in the bank. I'd be happy. And I'd be like, no, I haven't got that in, in the bank. Well, but, but I'm thinking... And I'm like, no, I wanna, I wanna be, I wanna be doing way more than that. But it's, m- but the thing is, right, mate, and y- you know this, money is not everything. Money is not happiness. No. It's not happiness. And the thing that I'm striving for, that you're striving for, that everyone's striving for, I think is happiness. That's it, right? If you've got happiness so. in your life, I mean, you seem one of the happiest people I know. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I fuck. think that just because I have I've a goofy laugh you. out of anxiety. But I've never seen you. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've never seen you without a smile on your face. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, I oh, mean, man, I'll take that. I, I appreciate that. How happy that. are you now on a scale of one to ten? I mean, I'm in the sun a lot. I, I think um, I'm immensely grateful. I go in and out of uh, a lot of self-doubt and a lot of um, disbelief that I am, to use like cliche language, like worthy of love is a thing that a lot of new age people say. Um, but nonetheless, like I've, I've, that's something that I've gone in and out of, like, am I worthy of someone like the love of another person? Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know, and so what I end up often doing is kind of like blocking myself to a certain degree. And, um, I'm really good at creating rapport with people real quick. I can like at a superficial level, I can like, like dart in, make connection fast. Yeah. Um, but then once it gets past a certain level, particularly with women, um, because there's like more of like an intimate connection, like we could be like you know life partners. Right. Um, that's where I have a little bit of like a fear of abandonment that happens to pop up. But I'm getting about ready to fucking let that shit go. Right. Where do you think it's that just comes not from? worth it? I mean, excuse not excuses. Stories could potentially be like which I've, I've mentioned on here before. Like I had interesting childhood stuff. Like my dad got into to drugs and crack. Wow. Um, as, I was, as a teenager, he ended up going like to prison and he was like pimping women and doing all sure. sorts of interesting stuff. And when I was like, you know, so that was like the male, the main, you know, male figure in my life, um, as a young man, right. you know, and all of a sudden kind of like drifting away and in retrospect, he's just on his trip. Like I love him entirely and now he's doing really well and it's like great. Uh, but in retrospect, I would imagine being a young man, um, it wouldn't be hard for you to, to, for one, me in this case, to not, feel as though uh they're leaving me right you know and yeah. maybe so then all of a sudden that perhaps would put up like some callousing around the you know your heart area yeah and not really letting people all the way in which then leads you to to starve essentially like emotionally starve right are you single now yeah right. that's why you get an awesome plants yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> to try and get a bird <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah i mean that's i mean that's a that's a story like fear you know, I think all, all, all that stuff of, of all we by feeling like we will be, you know, I think oftentimes money is another just uh, excuse or void filler of like being enough. Right. Do you think there's like enoughness in there? Yeah. For you? I, I don't know. I, I think I, I'm really starting to think now like money's not the not the be all and end all. There's something else there that I need to find. Fuck. Yeah, man. You know? Oh, I've money's not gonna. Once you get over enough to yeah. eat and drink and you know put fuel in your car and you know it's like what money's just a story after right. that. Right. Yeah, I've got I've got three three beautiful healthy kids right now, uh, a lovely wife, so you know and and that makes us really happy. Yeah. I just want to fly fly first class everywhere I fly. That's all right. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but no, li life life is good and business is good and you know there's a lot of fighters that I know who were even more successful than me in boxing that come out of boxing and now then they're, they're not doing very well yeah you know which is which is crazy for me because that's what kind of happens with with boxers we've only got a a, a lifespan of th to 30 years old for the average one oh for career yeah yeah and there's not a lot of money there's only the 0.1 that makes good money from boxing yeah uh so if I compare myself with some some of the guys that I know, you know I'm I'm killing it. Yeah. You know? And then you walk away with a lot of them. Walk away with a lot of the 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 effects in the brain, which right. can lead to you know or is associated with things like depression and yeah. all sorts of kind of interesting maelstroms yeah. inside the mind. CTE is is a crazy thing, and yeah, there's a lot of fighters right now who who are really really bad with it of people i know the same age as me yeah younger than me yeah and uh it's sad you know because they put the, they dedicate their life to the sport and then they leave the sport with the cte with not much else going on they end up working in a shitty job that they don't like yeah and then that's when the depression really kicks in Fuck yeah, man. that's when they start really drinking putting it away yeah it's well. compounded yeah. so if it's not money you know it's not money what is it for you like having enough money i think there is something to that in, in correlation to happiness for sure yeah um but once you get past that point what do you think what do you think it is i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not but in plants it's not money no. there's got to be something else <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, th I think just bringing me bringing me kids up um i think I, I love i love spending time with my kids you know yeah but 
I, I don't know. Like I, I love traveling. Uh, I've got no idea, mate. You meditate? No, I've tried and tried. Gotta get and you tried. meditating, man. Yeah. I think that's a good. It's a good. I mean, that's an interesting I, thing of, of like grabbing, gaining some semblance of control of of thoughts. You know, it's like in in my experience, my thoughts have just a buttload of power over me, and so having that continual practice just like you were training a gym like you're cultivating you're training your, your body so your body's not just flailing out of control and dangerous right. is actually it's honed in it's yeah. the same way as the mind the mind's doing repetitions all day long like 60 80 thousand thoughts per day you know so right. it says some papers or whatever um you know so throughout that it's it's repeating these these processes all day long so just the process of like sitting and being able to sit and watch um is quite helpful and then i think it gets interesting when you start getting into like psychedelics and other different realms have you messed yeah. with psychedelics at all no that's something uh, I would be interested in yeah, messing might be, with. It might but be the thing is, thing. I've got a very addictive personality, and I'm they're um, the opposite, man. Yeah. I mean, depending upon the psychedelic. Yeah. Right. I mean, mushrooms aren't fun. There's work. Ayahuasca is not a good time. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you're all. not. It's not a wild Friday night. It's like you know, you're don't you're going in and and essentially addressing these questions in a really yeah. deep way, and at times um, parts will pop up that you maybe didn't really want to pop out of the chest do you highly recommend that uh, not for every person um for a close friend you know talking sitting inside of a sauna in a s- very specific circumstance like i would say like if it feels appropriate um i don't think it would be it just depends on the person man right. if you feel if it feels like you feel called to it and you're in a good circumstance where like mm-hmm. the set and setting is really great around people that you absolutely yeah. trust you're in a place that you absolutely trust it feels completely safe that the dosage of everything you're with people that are like fucking scientists about it um i think it's awesome right you know if it's not that then it's like well you need to just be really um just examine your set and setting closely i think is the really important yeah. thing you don't want to just throw yourself into anything like yeah. that because you're getting into real shit you know what like using when you realize the power of a handful of mushrooms tell me tell me your last experience on that and what it was feel like uh ketamine was the last one and so it was i did a, a 45 minute meditation using ketamine which is oftentimes used with with like we were talking about before like ptsd right. um, and depression and stuff like that um you know, so i was using that essentially what the what happens with using it is it kind of creates like this almost like disassociative type feeling which i think what's that disassociation what the value i'm not an expert ketamine by the way um but the value of that could be when we're so deeply tied to addictive thought patterns whatever it may be Mm. um having that disassociation that's like a it feels like a like a battle disassociate it means you're running your problems like well maybe i'm just creating space enough that i can kind of uh you know, go in and kind of clean the house up a little bit because there's not a hurricane running right. for that span of an hour. Yeah. <laughs> right, I know what you're saying. Yeah. So would you, would you recommend ketamine? Dude, again, it's totally a dependent person. on the person. If you're in, I mean, so ketamines, there's ketamine clinics. I mean, that's like real stuff where you can right. go see a doctor and have it oh, admi- really? administered ketamine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about ayahuasca? I think that it's, again, it's... it's. Tell me about your last experience on that. Last experience with that was in Oregon, and it was about five years ago or something like that. And um, yeah, again, super controlled setting, really beautiful space out in like the middle of the desert in Oregon. Um, amazing practitioners or shamans that were, were doing it, great group of people, sitting around in a circle, drink the stuff, stay up till, you know, four in the morning. And um, essentially, it's like a sensation. My sensation with that. <sighs> It's going to be different every time. Um, my last sensation, it's not really that clear, actually, what what the... I don't remember... I don't have a, a, a really excellent description of, like, this is right. what happened. It was, like, five or six years ago. Um, but why, why so long? Why have you not done it since? I've Any done reason? mushrooms since. So I did some with, like, in, like, uh, uh, you know, with Aubrey and, and those guys. We do kind of like a, like a men's group, I guess you right. could call it. Um, and... That's been more what we've what, what I've been getting into recently. Um, it's a big it's it's essentially in my mind. I I have a lot of fear, you know. So I before doing things like that, like I get invited to different ceremonies and stuff, and mostly based off of fear, I'm like, eh, 
I don't know if I want to do that. Mm. Um, you know, but then if I have a group, you know, like, you know, Aubrey and those guys are leading and I'm like, okay, fucking whatever, just throw yeah. me in, I'll do it. Right. You know, so a lot of it's just having the, the right group where yeah. I'm like, okay, like whatever, you know, whatever you guys want to do, I'll, I'll do it. Just throw me in the pot and we'll, right. just, we'll stew together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I tried, I tried cannabis for the first time this year. Damn. Like, just the first time. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I smoked weed. And well, I, I took a, I took a gummy. That was the first thing I done. Yeah. Uh, do you know BJ Gado? Uh. Uh-uh. uh From the again another guy. name. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I've been training him, and he's great, and he's shredded. He's like you, but I think he might be even a bit more shredded than you. Yeah. He does this for, he does this for for a living. Yeah. And uh, he, he was I was telling him that about me drinking wine and all that. And he went, "You should try this. It's great, and you'll love TV, and you'll and you'll, you know." So I tried it. And I liked it, but then I tried it a couple more times, and I didn't really like it. Yeah. Then I smoked some joint as well, and I didn't really like it. Were you it. by yourself? No, I was with my my wife and. Try it by yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a better way to do it because you don't have any. There's no responsibility of like of like being Tony. You don't need to you right. know, maintain any kind of. So that's what oftentimes what all I, like you know like the what would Jesus do armbands. I think of like what would Aaron do? Right. You know, so yeah. if I'm doing something, I'm like, I don't want to have to do what would Aaron do? Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm that not. makes sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want to. I love that, yeah. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> yeah. You want to be in a place where you, where it's a completely safe container to be like, what would fucking blah, 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 whatever. It doesn't right, matter. Yeah. Yeah. Like whatever comes out is there. Because deep down underneath all this stuff, like there was, I was listening to Ram Dass talk about um, who you think you are is highly vulnerable who you are is invulnerable mm. you know, so so tony jeffrey is this idea and concept you know and i'm a boxer and i'm a businessman yeah. and a family man and all these things those are all stories like even thinking of like i mean this is getting way out there this is the experience i have with the ketamine thing but thinking like i have a memory of what i look like you know like there's like this memory like whereas if you go to a lot of hunter gatherer tribes they don't know what the fuck they look like right you show them the mirror themselves, they freak out. Mm. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> you know, like, oh, like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. You know, all they see is this outward projection that, oh, they, I see, you know, my brother and my sister and my friend and my, you know, my baby right. and the trees. But like the idea of me, whereas now we're in this, this world where we're so deeply entrenched in ourselves, you know, we have this running memory of exactly what we look like and what we. Right. You know, so be so. I think it's important it, when you are exploring kind of like psychoactive type territory. It is valuable to be able to let go of that image of what Tony yeah. is and just allow whatever's deeper than that to come out. No, yeah, that makes that makes <laughs> sense. I'll try that. Try that. I'll try that. <laughs> Tonight I'll be on my roof, like just loving life, thinking about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, do you drink? Not at all. Never. Yeah. No, I did a lot. I used to drink a lot. Yeah, right. I used to drink for for. Um, you know, I was I was too insecure to talk, especially again to to girls or women or whatever it was at that point, um, and so I I was alcohol was very helpful with dissolving that base layer of discomfort, right? So that I could be like more myself in quotations. Mm. Um, so I was completely dependent on it, right. you know. And then I went on a trip for into Asia where I was going for like five months, and essentially I was just like a cheap bastard. Alcohol was like it was like two fifty for a beer and like two bucks for a plate of food. So the relativity, I was just like, oh, I just won't drink. Right. And then I got back and had no interest in alcohol anymore. Wow. That's great. Have you used it all your life? No. Uh, last last few years, three, four years, maybe five years, uh, I've been drinking. But, but when I was boxing as well, I would drink after a fight. You go out and get like ridiculously drunk. Yeah. And eat shit tons of food. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've it's been in my culture, being from the north north of England. That's kind of what you do. Right. You know? Well, and if I wasn't fighting, I would be every weekend. Uh, you know, that's what ev- that's what that's what everyone does where, where I'm from. They go out every weekend, get drunk, yeah, eat loads of shitty food. And What's your feeling of of growing up? Was it Northern England? Yeah, right? northeast of England. So northeast England compared to LA, what's that contrast like? It's completely different. Um, com like night and day. I was just back there a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and uh, and I lo- I love what it's done to me because I think my upbringing has made me the person who I am today. I've learned a lot from that. I've seen a lot from being where I'm from. Yeah. I worry now that my daughters are getting brought up in LA, which is completely different. different. And they're not going to have the same experiences as me. Uh, like being so streetwise as me, I'm very streetwise, where they're not. But it's a, 
yeah, it's it's night and day. The thing at LA is everyone is kind of, well, not everyone, but a lot of people who we're in circles with is always like we'll see another one. Is looking for the next thing and the, and they're trying to do better and they're trying to progress. Yeah. And now I'm really happy that you're doing this. You're happy what I'm doing. Yeah, they're happy for each other. Where I'm from is a little bit different. Yeah, people's normally stuck in the jobs, and then if if someone does well, it's like, yeah, fuck them. You know, like, it's, you know what I mean? Totally. It's, yeah. Yeah, if one person's light gets brighter, then it, it, it kind of um, emphasizes if someone else's light isn't quite all the way on. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah. Oh, no. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but I'll, I'll, I'll love the year earlier. I think it's great. There's so many opportunities. So many opportunities have come my way through, through being here. Some of the crazy shit that I've done. Uh, like, for example, I was a, a face of Levi's in 2016. A what of Levi's? A face. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> this this fucking face. That here, fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, good. <laughs> I was on. I was on billboards in Berlin. I was on uh, <laughs> top of taxi cabs in New York City. <laughs> the New York good. Underground posters, and that's for being in LA. You know. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. I've, I've been featured in on so many tv shows best thing i got is i used to do burlesque shows in oregon right it's not as impressive <laughs> burlesque shows. <laughs> <laughs> no it's not that impressive it's not that impressive <laughs> <laughs> so with the mindset which mindset's healthier la mindset or north england oh definitely LA. definitely LA. because really yeah i think I, I, I think for for me because i've, I've got that mindset as well that's yeah. there but, but for me la and I feel like trying to stru- go forward all the time. Yeah. There, it's kind of settled. But then the difference is the far end of the spectrum, the LA side is like the like yeah. the common joke is like when you're out to lunch with somebody from LA, they're always kind of look, looking over your shoulder to see if someone cooler is coming in the right, room. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. And so there's like, there's that ongoing kind mm. of, it's like a lack of uh, a foundation almost, you know, like the right. foundation's always slipping because I think when everybody kind of is infected by that sensation, any relationship could kind of fall apart at any time as That's well because true, you yeah. could it's like oh you could find somebody that has more instagram followers or you right. know, could like develop my career more yeah. so now i don't have space for you anymore yeah. whereas in northeast east or you know, whatever smaller places yeah. it's like no we're here together man yeah no that, <laughs> you know? I, definitely know what I definitely know what you mean we yeah. get in a bar fight i'm with you <laughs> yeah you know you la it's like i don't know who's with me yeah you get in a bar <laughs> fight you turn around the fuck you're gone. yeah no we're <laughs> out of here man <laughs> but I, i've got i've got a pretty small circle in in la right now who i, who I trust who's who's got me back for whatever you know yeah. uh i've got a, a bit of a bigger circle with uh with different people like yourself, influencers, yeah. and then outside that, there's a bigger circle who are, who are really, uh, who are kind of know who um, who would be the person who looks over your shoulder to see who the next person yeah, is, exactly. you know. Right. So I think as long as you know who you are, who you're with, I think you're good. Yeah. And and you understand what it's like here, what the culture is like here, because it's it's definitely like that. Yeah. It's it's like what people see as well, like. So, oh yeah, let's get coffee. Oh yeah, we'll get coffee. You're never gonna get fucking coffee with them. Yeah, it's not. Know? Yeah, it's like a nice thing to say. But yeah, both of you kind of know it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't well, really want to happen. How many people do you have in your cabinet? The the inner layer, the inner circle. Uh, about four. Yeah. Tight. Then then it gets bigger. Then I've got like a bunch. Like I would see like I'd put you in the, the circle because you we're not second tier. Yeah, second second that. tier, that's, that's sweet. which is which that, is yeah. which is cool. Stuff. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I put the third tier, the fourth tier. We would actually get coffee. <laughs> yeah, we would. Yeah, exactly. That's the second tier. The second tier, tier get coffee, <laughs> get lunch, yeah, get an ice bath together. Yeah, <laughs> we we can do that. Mm. Uh, what about you? D- do you feel that way? You've got like a, a tight tier, then a. I've I never have. thought about it like that before, but that's kind of what it's like. Yeah, and they all fluctuate. They all circulate in and out, but you only have so much space. So you heard of like the, the, the Dunbar rule, the 150. It's like how many primates are, are able to um, take care of each other before, uh, what's that What's that called? When they're picking each other's hair and stuff oh, like yeah. groom each other. Yeah. You know, so once you go beyond that, then they're, they're kind of like you can't take care of each other anymore. And so there's a similar thing with, with – humans where it's like i think there's a certain point where it's just you have to push somebody out in order to bring somebody else in right you don't have to push out in a bad way it's just like we're probably not going to like be texting back and forth yeah you know you kind of cycles out and they see that numbers around 150 is that what it is that's the max that's like how many people are going to be in a tribe that you're able to actually really i I heard that number as well yeah but beyond that you're just like we can be friends on social media or something but we're not going to really be connecting there's 150 kind of like 
bump bumper. Yeah, and I heard that from a, a gym owner when I walked my gym. He, he said, I knew everyone's name. He said, but when it gets to about 100, 150, exactly, yeah. you'll not know anyone's name. It gets weird. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. just becomes this nameless, faceless entity of sorts. Right. Yeah. So what have you learned about running a business compared to being a, an Olympic boxer? It's so easy. I want to take a quick moment and thank our sponsor, Organifi, and make a special announcement for the winner of the Hanging Challenge that we did at the end of January. Uh, so what the recommendation was, was for people to hang for a total of 90 seconds each day for, uh, I think it was a week, 10 days, something like that. Uh, and then post about it, tag Organifi, uh, tag some friends, all that stuff. And Jules Horn, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Jules Horn. He's a handsome devil on the on the internet. And uh, yeah, Jules Horn. Uh, so get at me, Jules, on the Instagram, at Align Podcast. And I will hook you up with Organifi, and we'll get you a month's supply of deliciousness from there. Uh, Organifi is a company that I've been devouring for the last several years. They use all the best products, uh, ingredients. It's all USDA organic. It's gluten-free it's dairy free it's vegan i'm holding my hands my what i use for energy a little boost before working out and sometimes during working out I'll just pour some into water this is the acai cordyceps infused red juice gently dried superfood powder i still don't know how to say the word acai by the way that might be um incorrect somehow that's okay though uh, inside the stuff we got pomegranate juice we got cranberry powder we got blueberry juice powder um we got it's not pomegranate juice it's juice powder it's all powder stuff you, you put it in the juice uh beetroot which is good for circulation vascularity all those things cordyceps reishi it's good stuff uh you can get yourself 15 percent off on this stuff by going to organifi o-r-g-a-n-i-f-i dot com and then use the align code l-i-g-n uh at checkout you'll get 15 percent off your purchase uh thanks so much for checking that stuff out i'm sure you're going to enjoy it and tell me about it tell me your thoughts are did you did you get pumped on it did you get psyched any of that stuff um all right here we go back to the show with the legend tony jeffries Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> I mean, I competed from the age of 10 to 27. Like you said, 106 fights. I fought for England and Great Britain 56 times, which means I'm fighting the champion of another country. Yeah. Who's, so basically I'm fighting a monster who wants to knock me head off. Yeah. Right? Dieting all the time, in shape all the time, training all the time, thinking when you've got a fight coming up, Went from the moment you wake up in the morning to the, the, the second you go to bed at night, thinking about your opponent and, and thinking about this fight, and it's just always in the back of your mind. Going from all of that, and then then I, I, then actually getting in the ring and fighting someone. Yeah. You know? Going from all of that. What's the hard part? The fighting or the prep? I think I think it's it's both hard. Like the the prep because you've got to have your mind right for the full for the full eight weeks if it's a camp, you know. Yeah. And then when it gets to the fight. It depends on what the fight is, really. Yeah. You know, you might fight, you might fight someone who's really, really tough to 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 beat, or someone who's punches really hard yeah. that you're hurting you all the time. Uh, but the the both, it's both really hard. But then when you get to the end of that, and uh, like me career, and I'm I'm retired now, life is fucking. It's been a walk in the park, honestly. Building this business and and doing what I've done, it's been easy work. Cool. Because I've focused my energy and me and my passion from boxing I've put it into this and now this is just like Im imagine how hard it was to get to the Olympics and then medal in the Olympics all that hard work and dedication put that into a, into a business what you're passionate about and what you love it's easy mate yeah it's easy um, so so yeah I mean y the one thing that, that is not easy when you do retire is realizing that you'll not have that feeling of getting your hand raised at the end of a fight yeah a lot of people go through bouts of dark moments like astronauts and you know an example right. of that is astronauts they go to space even you know yeah. positioning their whole life around that they finally get to do it and then they go through this dark spiral afterwards it's like what the fuck am i supposed yeah. to do? like i've been on the moon man like what do we do yeah, what's next or, <laughs> yeah what's next <laughs> you know yeah. hot dog stand it's like not <laughs> oh, there's nothing yeah. for me yeah, We're good, and that's what it's like with boxing as well because it really is the best feeling in in the world. Getting your like eight weeks of training, fighting someone, 
in front of thousands of people winning the fight. It's just it's just the best feeling ever. It's funny because uh, a, a friend of mine, Wayne McCulloch, he was a former world champion, WBC world champion. He was an Olympic silver medalist, and he had a uh, he had over two hundred fights, like a bit a bit of a legend in in Ireland. And when my wife was pregnant with my daughter, he already had a daughter, and he said to me, he said, uh, "Tony, there's no better feeling than having a kid." And I was like, "Really? Hmm. You mean that's better than winning the Olympic medal? One hundred percent. Having a kid is better than winning the Olympic medal." I was like, "Fuck me! That was the best thing ever, you know." So oh, he was right. Oh no! So well, fast, fast, fast forward a few months later, when my wife had the kid, it, my wife, the, the kid, the kid come out and wasn't breathing properly. The doctor come and put tubes down her throat, all the way down, pumping her, smacking her. I thought she was gonna die. The wow. room filled up with, with, with people. It was the worst fucking moment of my life. Wow. You know. So I was like, shit. No, oh, when you weren't quite there. Anyway, so. I, th- I thought no way that, that's not that's not as good so I thought maybe because that's because that experience I never experienced what it's like to become a father properly so my wife had our second kid and I was thinking oh yes this is going to be it this feeling I've been waiting for I had the kid and I was like sound yeah right no way could I compare that with winning the Olympic medal <laughs> not a fucking chance <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> what? What's he talking about? <laughs> then I had a third kid, and it was just like, uh, oh, I met so. uh, See? W- what about having the kids? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was good. Not still, gonna lie. It's not like it was good. You still got the kids. No, I mean, yeah, it's great <laughs> having the kids. <laughs> but what they see is when the kid comes out, you find that connection straight away, and it's just yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. It's just like a, a, an amazing feeling, but it was like, well, yeah, I would think a lot. Well, don't a lot of parents go through? I mean, especially a lot of women go through like like uh, d- bouts of depression. Yeah, after having, the kid, depression after having yeah. the kid as well. Does that yeah. happen with men as well? The same? I know with women it's a lot more of like a hormonal thing, but men are sharing yeah. hormonal stuff no, as I, well. I never, I've never really heard of that. You know? Did your wife or girlfriend, or is it a wife? No, my wife. No, she she didn't she didn't either. Like she was fine. We we were fine. Uh, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, the kids are great. It's all it's all work, you know. It really is all work. I've got three of the little bastards now. Yeah. But <laughs> Does it, so has have you had those sensations of like this is the best feeling in the world since then? No, <laughs> definitely not. And that, and that, don't get me wrong, I love my kids more than anything on this world. Yeah, but like but you haven't had the the arm raised up in the in the ring with thousands no. of people rooting like you were you were promised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I was talking to someone before about Brad Burton. Uh, uh, I don't know if you heard of Brad Burton. He's the number. He's called the UK's number one motivational speaker. I was talking oh, yeah. about it before, and he was talking. And he was saying it's kind of like a firework going off every fight. Yeah, right. And then you're never going to experience that firework yeah. ever again. Yeah. You know, so you've got to try and understand that, which I understand, and put that focus and energy into something else, which I did with the with the boxing. You yeah. Know? How do you keep your mind set for a a forty? Is it forty eight week camp? 46? Eight, eight, eight weeks comes. Eight oh, weeks eight weeks. Okay, yeah. I thought I was going to say 48 yeah. sounds like a buttload of time. For an eight-week camp, how do you keep your mind focused on that time? Is there is there ways to like, you know, are you, are you incorporating some kind of like play or some kind of something into there that's like makes you have a good time or is it pretty much just like busting your ass all the time? It's just busting your ass all the time. Okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so you, you'd have a, a cheat meal, you'd call it a cheat meal on, on, a, on a Sunday. So you're just looking forward to that all week because you're di- strict dieting and, and, uh, and back then, uh, like eight nine years ago, I didn't have the education that I, I kind of had or I kind of could have got right now uh, about nutrition. So it was just like I was hungry all the time, you know, yeah. not not doing it the right way. Right. Uh, but yeah, it was horrible, mate. It really was. You couldn't wait for the for the fight to come. And in the last couple of weeks, when you're really getting the weight down, you know, I fought at 168 pounds. What are you now? Two maybe 220. Might be a little. I fasted last week for a while, so I'm probably kind of like low. But yeah, two fifty. How tall are you? Six four point five. I'm in between. Shit, you're the tall. Yeah, I'm a wow. Yeah, I'm a big awkward giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> you're a big guy. A big guy. <laughs> so I'm I'm six two nearly, and I fought at one hundred and sixty eight pounds. So to get on that, I was I was big for the weight, you know. Yeah. So it was pretty tough. Were you were scared in the fight? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Not when you. It depends who you who you're fighting really, but like, yeah, you were scared in case because anything can happen in a fight. When I was 16 years old, I fought in the European final, fighting for the gold medal. I would have been the f- 
but I, I was. I won. I won the fight, but I was going to be the, the first British fighter to win a European medal in 25 years, and it was like a big, huge thing. Uh, as an amateur, and I was fighting this Greek who knocked everyone out. He was about five foot five, sh- fucking massive arms, and he just just hit people and they'd be gone. So I fought him, and I was winning the fight easy. And he caught me with a right hand. My legs all buckled like went like jelly. I got a stand in the account. I was just like I was kind of like knocked out for a little bit on my feet. Yeah. And uh, I ended up coming back and winning the fight somehow, and I got really bad concussed. Uh, you know. So after that, I was I put fear in the back of my mind because I, I didn't see the punch coming right. for every other fight I had after that. For the rest, like for the next PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. For the next ten years, I would be worried that. That's going to happen again. It did happen a few times. So it's, it's scary. How do you unshake that? You, you cannot really. If it comes down to your preparation and your, and your fitness. Because after you get hurt like that, you're fighting on instinct. Right. You fight, it's, it's auto drive. Huh. You're fighting with what you, what you know from you know, all the years of training. So that's how I won't end up winning the fight. Yeah. It's scary though, mate. So when I told you about doing them brain tests in uh, Vegas... They the found out that I've got a, a big split in my membrane. Oh, right. The membrane, the bit of skin that attaches your brain to your skull. And what that's off is being when you've been punched, your brain shook. And it shook that much that it split that membrane. You know? Yep. And the, they said there's no evidence that that affects you in everyday life. But I tell you what, it's scary knowing that you've got something in your brain that's split. Mm. You know? So what is, how does that affect the person? It, that's What's what they're the saying. That, that haven't got any evidence that it does affect the person oh, it might make yet. you like a superhero it might make you better <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, it was funny because I was talking to this this guy after I'd done after I, after I'd done the, uh, the maths about being punched in the head around 50,000 times and this guy had like 300 fights and he was a pro, he had loads of pro fights and he had 12 round wars and I was like hey mate listen I said I've done the maths I had 106 fights and I've been punched in the head around 50,000 times he went well Tony rem- if uh, he said Imagine how many times I've been punched there. I had 300 and whatever fights. I went, fuck me. I went, do you think it's affected you in everyday life? He went, nah, it's made me smarter. Hmm. And I was like, that guy's definitely punch drunk. <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> punch drunk. <laughs> being punched in the head, that must be 100,000 times and you think it hasn't affected you in everyday life and make you smarter. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. So, no, and that, that's what it is. I'm, I'm happy that I'm at this stage right now where I realise that it has done damage. You get past that stage where you don't understand what the fuck's going on in your brain. Yep. You don't think it's done damage, but it, it definitely has. What about for people that would get, like I, I personally notice myself with anxiety and whenever there's like a, a potential physical confrontation. Mm. Um, and I've like trained jujitsu for years and Muay Thai and, you know, different things. I'm not a great fighter by any means. Right. Um, but I've like practiced fighting a lot, um, but not, well, not a lot, a lot for, you know, for someone that doesn't practice at all. Um, and I still have, when those instances will happen, I'll notice this, like, kind of sympathetic fight-flight, like, Ugh, like right, I'll just yeah. notice my blood pressure going up. And, like, I'm not like a Tate Fletcher, where it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you could fucking, you know, be holding the broken bottle in front of his neck. He's like, all right, well, <laughs> yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm and like, you, oh, God. And you can really imagine <gasps> Tate being I what a fight Tate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, th- just this morning, I was driving my kids to school, and some guy... Uh, I, I pulled into the middle of the road so I was turning left and I shouldn't have really done it but he was like me you know what they do over here Meh! on the fucking honk on the horn and I'm like oh and yeah. this guy's going crazy and I'm getting I'm getting that that the little bit of anxiety like thinking it's going to fucking go off here <laughs> even with someone trained like me right. you still get the the heartbeats the blood the, the blood pumps and you think uh, even though I'm trained it's still you still I think it's natural yeah you know well so <laughs> is there would you have any like tip because I'm sure you get like kids or whatever people coming to you that want to learn to fight to protect themselves yeah is there any like how, where does where does one start with somebody in that situation just learn to box like go to a boxing gym a local boxing gym do a boxing fitness classes even what you've been doing at box and burn yeah learning how to how to throw a correct right hand turning your hips and fully extending that's enough there to to to, to be able to, to win a fight if you yeah. want to win a fight like if you yeah, if you punch me now I've, I've seen you punch if you punch me now in the face you knock us out mm. believe it or not mm. you you would because you knew how to do it you know uh, I don't know I could use work I'm stiff <laughs> I need to like I need to loosen up yeah but but even even uh, you like you, a tree you're all stiff <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're all like a tree 
<laughs> like a fucking flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but you just got to learn. And yeah. then if if it ever does go off, boom, game over. You know what's interesting that I was noticing uh, specifically in relation to the I was, I was telling you before about doing like the the ketamine assisted meditations, um, and noticing the the looseness of my body after doing that, um, and just like the walking around having this awareness that if you carry tension inside of your body in whatever form, I think it's all the same. It'll all manifest itself as like musculoskeletal, like your muscles will yeah. tense up if you're tense in your mind or emotions or whatever. Um, so moving around in, in, a, in a body, it's very valuable to be able to not hold on to tension and be able to allow those stressful situations like that car situation where you're, right. you know, the guy's freaking out for you to allow that, that stress to build up and move right out of your body just as easily. So just like think of like a moving river. Yeah. You know, so if the body can stay loose and you see like Conor McGregor, like walking into the ring before the fight is like the gorilla arm thing. Yeah. It's just like keeping that, think of all that pressure that's on that person. They're walking in, you know, millions of people around the world watching. It's like, I'm just going to shake it out, right. you know, stay right. confident and just allow all that pressure to go in and whoa, straight out. Right. That reminds me of what you guys were trying to teach me. I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm that easy to teach of like loosening up when I'm going through like the different mm. combinations and stuff. Because if I'm too stiff with each one, it's like, I don't, it's, 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 well, you, you uh, it's not good. Yeah. And you, yeah. And you, you end up getting tired. <laughs> and you get tired. Really yeah. Yeah. And the thing is teaching, not just you, but most men, that's the hardest thing to teach someone is yeah. how to relax and exhale. Yeah. And exactly. the then the power comes through when you then, can actually yeah. relax. Yeah. More of that, like yin soft, like be able to balance and relax right. in your body. Now we can pow. Now yeah. we can get real power. Yeah, because it's natural. Really to think, ironic. Natural to think if you hold your breath and tense, yeah, that's well, what you're going to get the most power, and you're going to be. But it's not when you're. That's why when when women come to the gym, it's they they the get it straight away because they're not even bothered about that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But then the form is getting really good and they're punching harder and they can do more. But when a man comes, it's like, oh, we need to punch this bag as hard as we can. And, and then 30 seconds later, like, oh, fuck. Yeah. So what can what men <laughs> learn from women in boxing? Just relax, you know. And our, our gyms are probably 70% female clientele. And That's why I'm going to keep coming back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is great for men, you know. <laughs> Uh, but watch their watch them <laughs> just relax and how how they make a flow. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, boxing is a huge, huge trend now in fitness. Everyone is is wanting to box, um, and that's why now we do our education program. I don't know if you've seen much of that. Where this is my this is my passion right now. Uh, teaching one person how to box is not my passion, but teaching a personal trainer or a fitness professional how to teach other people. Yeah, that's what I love doing. So we travel the world uh, with our education program, teaching them personal trainers or fitness professionals or anyone help to teach boxing i think that's probably more your uh your bliss he's like joseph campbell i don't know if you're familiar with that guy mm. here with thousand faces is follow your bliss um he's he's considered the most famous he's dead now but uh mythologist right so here are a thousand faces essentially that every human being goes through this sta- same hero's story arc you know, so you start from this ordinary world. Yours would be like come from North England, mm. and then you leave that ordinary world, and you you know it's the call to adventure, and then you fight the dragon, and then eventually you can return back to that ordinary world and like bring the lessons that you've gathered from your, right. your journey. So that's like you know the story of Jesus or the story of you know Harry Potter or fucking Lord of the Rings, all the same shit. Yeah, um, I'll check them out. Yeah, I think that's good. But um, oh, why did I say that? I got all hot and bothered about uh, that. Oh, what we talking about? Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, about about you said how how I found my passion with teaching people how to. Teach. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's yeah. back in the beginning. We were right. like, well, what is it beyond money? It, I mean, I I'm pretty sure that's what it is for you. Like you love helping people and you yeah. love having impact on that. And you yeah. love teaching people to teach people. It's like this but, yeah. higher level of of broader level of impact at least. Yeah. No, I love that, and we've 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 taught over two thousand people now, fitness professionals or even people dads who want to learn how to teach boxing so when their kids grow up they can teach them what we were talking about you know yeah so but we've t- over two thousand people now and you now if every one of them is teaching 50 people each we've have an impact on a ton of a ton of lives yeah and honestly that that's for me that's the most rewarding thing these days when people tell me wow tony you've really helped change my life yeah, and we get that so yeah it's more than money yeah in the end like money is a story you know it's a it's a we agree you know that this arbitrary piece of paper has this much value and this other one with a different symbol has it has this much value yeah, yeah. you know in the stock market and the housing market it's like wow my house i have 
you know, half a million dollars in equity. Oh man, I'm in debt, half a million dollars. Mm. You know, it's like that can happen in a matter yeah. of a week. Yeah. It yeah, probably it won't be can. in a week, but you know, it can happen quick. Yeah. You know, so it's like this belief system is, is, is essentially what the financial system is. But then you look at relationships, maybe there's a story there too, but nonetheless, I think that's like a, a deeper, um, it's a, it's a, a currency with a foundation. Mm. Tell me, to dig deeper into that. Well, so with that, those relationships, all those, you know, tens of thousands of people that you've helped, you know, and the 2,000 people oh, that you right. specifically like hands-on help, um, those relationships, if the story of money disappears, those relationships yeah, yeah. are still currency. Sorry, I thought you meant if all the relationships with, with, the, with the woman as well, I thought you meant. Oh, well, sure, those two. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah don't no, know. but no, build, building them relationships and having that impact is is so valuable. Yeah, so, I think so that's valuable. I think that that's like that 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 deep sense of insecurity or like frenetic kind of, you know, I always need to get more more more. I think most of that is because we want to feel safe. Right. We want to feel secure, I think. Um but I think that inherently we know that the financial system that we're we're all entrenched in it's just a big fucking story. Yeah. You know, but those relationships part, when you can cultivate that, I think those are the happiest people. Right. The people that like, dude, my network of relationships, of people that that I love and they love me, and I know that if the financial story disappears, we can all grow goats and tomatoes and like live together. Yeah, yeah. There's a deep sense of like, we're good, man. Right. We're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are good. I learned, I, <laughs> I learned a lot of that off there. You, I'm sure you know Jeff Ruja. Yeah, yeah, of course. I learned a lot about off that of him because he's he's great now. He's always trying to help you network with other people. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, he's he's amazing at that. And building relationships is like is everything. Build relationships and everything else doesn't really matter, but it'll come it'll come back to you if yep. you if you if you're helping people. Yeah, you know that's 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 huge helping and, people. And then I think within that, in order to have a meaningful value to provide for other people. Is having that those that those moments of introspection and alone time and like doing work right. with yourself yeah. by yourself, right? You know, so I think that's you can get too far on the other side of the of the pendulum or the spectrum where you're like, okay, I'm all just other people and I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna yeah. help you. It's like, help well, yourself. then you're gonna burn out. You know, so it's it's also like you're going in and having those moments and you know gathering the treasure and you know f- f- sorting, giving, having something to actually offer the tribe. And then going out and offering it to the tribe, right? Yeah. And then coming back and cultivating something, and then yeah. it's like a cycle, I think. No, I like that. Yeah. I love that, and, and yeah, I love that. That's that's very valuable. And it means a lot to me doing helping people like that. That's your shit, man. That's me shit. That's we'll, what, figure that's what <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Fucking figure it out. I love it. Um, what's uh, where should people go from here? We, we'll wrap this thing up. Where where people yeah, go? Yeah, uh, Instagram. You know, uh, and on my Insta- my Instagram is. We were kind of talking about uh, Jim Quick, how he's grew his Instagram so much. Yeah, you know? yeah. My Instagram hasn't grew as much as he's, but it's grew. No, yours popped off. Uh, it's it's grew Mine's, a lot. Mine sits. Mine just kind of chills out. Yeah. Mine's on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's still it's still gone that way it's rather than that way, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and the way I grew my Instagram <laughs> is by kind of doing what we just done, helping people, yeah, educating people, giving value on every single post, uh, you know, either educating or inspiring someone on every post and it's free for them to come to Instagram and learn. So if anyone wants to learn how to box or teach boxing, that's my niche market. You know, on my Instagram, they're going there, a shit ton of stuff for free. Yeah, you do an excellent job with it too. That's that's something I question all the time with um, social media. And I've been doing less posts because if I don't have something that's actually meaningful and valuable and it will be like in service of people's eyeballs, because right. there's so much shit and there's so much noise yeah. that... You know, I, I want more hearts or likes or follows or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it feels rude and disrespectful to, to like, hack the algorithm by just, like, putting out a bunch of shit all the time. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I probably do a better job with it. But nonetheless, yeah. I, I just doing posts of, like, my butt implants, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how that's helping people, man. <laughs> what, are we doing, what are we doing with this? <laughs> so you, you, <laughs> you don't do that is what I'm saying. No, oh, right, right, yeah. No. You don't see any butt implants on <laughs> no. my... <laughs> uh, so I heard that Instagram have you heard this that they're going to get rid of the likes oh I think they did it in Canada right it's in Canada and Australia they've got rid of the likes so people can start posting more and stop thinking about it more uh, and just putting more stuff out there less and thirst th- trap more just I want to do this because it yeah, feels valuable things that they'll be more creative but what I think is people's going to post more shit because 
if, if you're not bothered about how many likes you get, then it's going to be posting all sorts of shit. Oh, yeah, I think that's a bad decision for the the livelihood of Instagram as a company. Right. Because the likes make it so much more addictive. Yeah. But for the livelihood of human beings in general, I think it's of benefit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I get loads of likes, so I don't want to. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's good yeah. for my ego. It's, yeah, no, it does. It does. But like you see, it's, 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 it's an addictive thing. <laughs> It's an it's an addictive thing and, and, and it's temporary though. It's like kindling. All right. those likes, it'll feel good for maybe an afternoon or something like that. Yeah. You come and you're like, oh wow, people love me. Yeah. You and know, and then and then it's on to the next of like, okay, cool. I need to figure out. I either need to figure out how to take the holes out of this cup, um, or I need to keep on grabbing shit to to pour holes into this leaky cup. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great analogy. I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah yeah but my instagram is, is, is you'll be able to find me on instagram and uh learn how to box learn how to box yeah but one of the best teachers in the world i would say i don't know who's the i don't know if there is a best teacher in the no, world it you're certainly, no it is it's me it's i think you i know i think you i think it's like if we had to like vote i mean i don't know who the fuck else I vote uh, for. Uh, uh, like the reason Capri's. is <laughs> the reason is is because of instagram you actually I, i'm smart stuff. and putting putting the right corner there there's there's coaches that's way better than me but who haven't got a clue how to post on Instagram yeah. how to edit a video how to make it look nice how to engage yeah with it's all talent. part of it it's part of the craft some people have resistance against that stuff um, right. but they just have resistance of like it's like a part of them themselves like your ability to express in a way that groups of people are going to be able to actually grab it and understand it Right. that's part of your craft man yeah and and I, I try to advise boxers to, to do this Boxes to be posting because boxes like now nah, I'm not posting this I'm not posting this I'm saying no you should be posting your training camps people's interested in that people are interested and one one thing I what I was great at what a lot of boxers fall off doing is when they retire from boxing they fall out of the limelight when I retired from boxing I stayed in the in the limelight stayed on Instagram stayed in the transitioned yeah, yeah. Keep, keeping in in the newspapers in in the media sending them stories so they do stories on us and and, and now I go to the UK. Eight years after I retired from boxing, I'm selling courses out. I'm more well known now than I was when I was fighting, yeah. just because I kept on top of that shit. Yeah. You know, and it's a big mistake that I think boxers and athletes do. They're not really. If you lost them. all of that, how would you feel? If all all the social media and the validations went away, where, where would you be at? Fucking devastated. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, mate, I'd be good at it. I put so much time and energy <laughs> in it. How about you? <laughs> Tell the truth. It would fuck me up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's okay. Like, I, I contemplate it regularly, um, mainly just because of all that work. But I would I think I would get over it um, quick. Thankfully, um, I think it's very immensely valuable to have a trade. You know, right. so if I lost any form of, you know, being able to connect with people on the internet, I could go back to helping people with body work and, right. and physical therapy and mental and you would therapy want to do all that, that stuff. I would do. I would continue in the way that I'm going of like writing books and all that stuff. I would. I would probably just rebuild, honestly. I guess, but that's kind of a yeah, che- yeah. that's a cheating answer. So if I couldn't, if I couldn't do that again, um, like imagine trying to sell your book with no internet. It'd be tough. Be but people did it for the last ever. I know. You know. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's what you do. <laughs> books. Like how did books, they do it? The Send them flies like twenty years old. Books are older than that. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> didn't have Instagram, I did they? <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> yeah, how did the Bible ever spread that Instagram? I know, how, how did that, that get so it's big? It's mess me up the rest of the day. <laughs> 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 imagine imagine if you if there was no internet, imagine your mailbox, how many flyers and promotional shit you'd be getting through your mailbox. <sighs> I already get too many. I know. It's terrible. Every time I look at, every time I see them, I'm just like, this is such a waste of people's lives and resources and gasoline yeah. and... Yeah. It's unbelievable all the fucking just noise we have. I don't know. I wake, it's like I don't even look at any of it. No, me neither. We got to move on. Yeah. And what that is is people being attached to an old antiquated system that has no function, um, but it's there's still people attached to it because it provides jobs. And so there's gonna always going to be people, as long as there's money in a system, even if it's completely busted, Yeah. Um, if there's people that their livelihood is based on that, they're going to keep on pushing it and convincing people why it's good. Right. Which is why those people just need to... Do you follow Gary Vaynerchuk? Die off. Yeah, I think he's he's pretty special guy. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. And what he what he's talking was talking about was like these com- everyone should be putting money into Facebook ads and Instagram ads because that's where the eyeballs are right now. Yeah. And he says like in a year or two year, companies like Coca Cola uh, and Netflix and other other big companies are going to be piling money into Facebook ads because they're going to see the value of it. Yeah. Uh, rather than doing TV commercials 
oh, uh, yeah. which costs a fortune. Right. And wild. that's that's only going to put the the ad the ad price up for us yeah. when we put and that then we up there. We have to find something else. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like TikTok or something. Yeah, some fucking other, some TikTok. Other uh, have you seen that? Yeah. Someone convinced me I need to download it, so I did. But I don't have enough bandwidth, man. I need. I need. I. Uh, I, I question often like what is the value of growth and what does growth mean in the first place? Because there's like the, the very obvious growth of like numbers went up. Right. But then I think there's other levels of growth that sometimes we can miss as we're, you know, chronically staring into our cell phone, trying to boost yeah. like, an Instagram post or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm continually each day uh, kind of just posing that question for myself of like, okay, like what's, there's different levels of growth other than just like social media, yeah, hearts. <laughs> <laughs> but them the best kind. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best kind. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like cocaine. Like cocaine feels good, but it doesn't leave you feeling really good afterwards. Right. You know. Have you ever done cocaine? No. You never done it. No. Why are you I'm surprised? Like a, I'm like a drug addict. I know. In this thing compared to you. <laughs> I'll keep coming around here. I'll be a drug by the end of the year. <laughs> I haven't done it for a while. But nonetheless, it's a sim- I think it's a similar sensation. It's a great metaphor to, to social media. Yeah. No, the only, the only two I've ever had was that cannabis this year. That's it. Cannabis isn't even drug, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. We got to wrap this thing up. Oh, um, dude, thanks so much, man. Well, thank you. It's been great. I appreciate it. I'm sweating my balls We're off. We're sweating. Right We're sweating. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, wrap this thing up. Over and out. Turn the off. Bam. I hope you guys loved that conversation as much as I did. Uh, Tony is one of the most grounded, kindest, open-hearted humans that I have come across, especially for being such a freaking uh, badass murder machine. Uh, he's great. I highly recommend checking his stuff out. Uh, Box and Burn, if you're ever in town, go visit Box and Burn. Um, check him out on the internet, learn online, all that stuff. Um, thank you so much, speaking of online stuff, for starting the seven day free trial of the Align Method online program, uh, which we are revamping. We are going to be relaunching that thing. Um, I think March 1st is the planned launch date for that thing so we have a program up presently and then we got the super program coming up where we just revamp the whole thing uh march 1st so that is coming but you can start the seven day free trial and uh get into lifestyle stuff morning routines nighttime routines um if you're feeling stiff achy any of that stuff in your body and your joints if you want more flexibility uh forward head posture roll forward shoulders kind of hunchy spine patterns all that stuff if you got that going on in your body uh that is what the align method program is for you can find it at alignpodcast.com slash align method or you can go to my instagram at align podcast and uh, it's in the bio so you can start that thing there if you had any sweet takeaways from this conversation um you can tag me at align podcast and tony jeffries tell us what you thought and we will very likely reshare that stuff uh, because i appreciate it when you do that all right here we go i don't know why i say here we go at the end um it's over nothing's over nothing ever started nothing's ever ever over <sighs> i had too much coffee okay uh enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you next uh, thursday with a solo episode Power.